Well, hello, Paleo FX Tribe. Keith Norris back again with my good friend, Dr. Chad Walden. I just want to say one thing about Chad before we dive into it. Actually, I could say a lot of things about Chad, but one of the things that I love about this gentleman is he freaking walks the walk. He is not just, he does not just pay lip service to this stuff. He actually lives it day in, day out. He practices what he preaches. Go check out his IG. The dude, <laughs> works, out, the dude works out all the time in a nice decked out garage gym, which I am super envious of, by the way. So nice. one thing, Chad, that this coronavirus thing has taught me. So I, I fancy myself a minimalist. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I try to get rid of all the things and weightlifting equipment is quite a lot of stuff to accumulate. <laughs> right. So I'm always like, I can do without that. I would love to have it, but I can do without it because I'm in Austin. I'm surrounded by gyms. Um, yeah. But this coronavirus thing, it was, it, it forced me out of the gym. Thank you, coronavirus, forced me out of the gym made me do other stuff and do a lot more body work stuff, uh, body weight stuff, a lot more TRX bands, um, put me on my bike a lot more, put me sprinting, put me outside doing all the things. Thank you very much. Mm. And I still miss lifting heavy things. Yeah. So, so I'm ready to get back to that. <laughs> Enough about me. Yeah. Dad, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. And and before you even get into all that stuff, you, you mentioned embodiment and practicing what you preach. Mm. And I just want to turn that around and say, you you have modeled that for me, like in an incredible way. And before this call, we were talking about, um, well, I was thinking about how it all, Paleo FX all started for me. You know, I was working as a home health physical therapist, driving around in Austin, treating people with heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. And I had been spending a lot of time listening to uh, the great thinkers of this movement, you know, Chris Kresser and Rob Wolf mm -hmm. and Jimmy Moore and Nora Gagatis. And I was, I mean, I was taking notes. I was giving presentations. I was so into it. And then uh, I hear about this conference coming up here in my hometown in Austin. And I went to that first conference at the stadium and I got to meet all these people I was learning from. And then that was the first time I, I met you. And I was like, this, is, this guy is doing it. This guy is courageous. He's leading from the front. He's walking the walk, talking the walk, you know? And I, and I was like, I am home. Because I looked around and everybody else was doing the same thing. And I, I was thinking about all the people who were at that first one and how there's been so much evolution within the movement. How many, how, how many businesses have, have been born? I'm one of them within the movement. And um, I just have to give like all, all the honor to, to you and Michelle for like really co-facilitating this entire movement and inspiring so many people. And I want you to know that I get so inspired when you talk about um, nurturing destiny, you know what I mean? And like that, I think there's never been a better time to actually think about nurturing destiny than, than right here, right now, when we all have time to think about what's happening and feel into what's happening, right. you know, cause it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity to plant new seeds of how we want it to go to nurture it. You know, it, it is. And, I, and, and just to, just to say that Michelle and I both love this movement so much because we can co-create with our tribe of choice. I mean, mm -hmm. when I when I go in and I think, what is it that I want to do with my what is what is my life goal, and I, and there there really is no how can I say I and mean, I talked about Todd and Cole, our mutual friends Todd and Cole Witty, um, mm -hmm. we had a, a a ceremony last weekend, and one of these things that has been has kept coming up time and time again for me over the last few years is, I I don't have a goal so much is I have a reason for being. Mm. And, that, and that reason for being is to do life with my tribe of choice. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. my reason for being. And there's really no end goal. I mean, right. I, I see this being my my life course without, without <laughs> a goal, right? There's a direction, but there's no end goal. It is just to be in the day, every day, with my tribe of choice, co-creating. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Paleo FX just gives us that opportunity to do that. And we love mm. associating with our tribe and people like you who, who bought into this crazy idea. And they're like, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're down for co-creating. Yeah. And I, and I think as, I think as humans, we are wired for that, man. We, we oh, yeah. been sold this line that's, that's all about compare and compete when in reality mm -hmm. it is about co-creation. Yeah, I think, and I think we're evolving into that slowly but surely. But the people within the Paleo FX tribe get that intuitively. Yourself, yeah, yeah. I think uh, this whole crisis situation. I think it 
it's exposing a lot of the not enoughness in our in our brains, you know, and uh, underlying fear. Like it's really exposing it. And I think it's bringing up uh, something we've been like sweeping under a rug as far as like, how our culture uh, associates with death, like this inevitable thing, right. you know? And, and I saw this like firsthand when I was working with elders, like we put our elders in a, in a nursing home. We, we don't want to look at them grow old. We give them a lot of pills and like, we, and then we try to keep them alive as long as we can. It's, it's an interesting thing, right, right. Um, but we don't learn from them. We don't learn from them at the same time because they're not like productive. But then like a virus comes along and at any moment you could get it, that's what we're being told. At any moment you could go. And then it's like, oh my gosh. So it just brings up all this stuff and we don't know what to do with it, you know? And it's like, man, what, what's going on? And I, and I think like what you're talking about is, is really um, being, being exposed with a lot of this that's happening, you know? Right, right. So Chad, how are you navigating this time? And, and just so everybody knows, Chad yeah. and I are both in, in Austin proper. I'm more towards mm -hmm. downtown. Chad lives out in the beautiful hill country just a bit, but we are, mm -hmm. we're both essentially Austinites. So how yes. are you faring? I've been doing great. I've been doing great. Uh, the first two days were interesting. I think, I think the first two or three days were for most people. It just came on so fast and it was, it took me a while to get reoriented. And I'd be lying if I didn't say I, I felt some like, fear there, you right. know, like with what was happening. I was like, should I? And I, and I did, I went and got some extra food, you know, and stocked right. up a little bit more because I wasn't sure, you know, I was like this hierarchy of needs thing. I, I sort of started to feel threatened and a little unstable. So I, right. I was like, I need to take care of that stuff first. And then once I, once I got grounded, I started noticing um, some of the interesting things about this time, right? So for one, we've never had this many humans going through one experience like this together ever before. So there's a unity principle behind that. And always there's, when people come together, it's been like our nation, your nation, them, us. But this is like, we're all in this thing together, right? So I thought that was really interesting. And I'm also noticing a lot of people questioning a lot of things, a lot of things. You know, um, should we reopen? Should we stay at home? Are we getting the right information? Is the data correct? Yes. Is there a man behind the curtain? Is Bill Gates good? Are we gonna get vaccinated? Right, right, right. Are we gonna get shipped? Like people asking all these things and I'm just kind of just sitting back and watching it. and then. Um, noticing at the same time what I need to do, like get myself firm, keep order in my house, make my bed, sweep my floors, make right. the couch, like you know, and like these simple practices that I know are going to keep me um, going and open me up even more during this time because I, I view this time of staying at home uh, kind of like a sacred passage, you know, like we're all going away from like the comforts and the norms of what we're used to and a major pattern interrupt. So the, the nervous system, even in and of itself, is getting like shooken up a little bit. Like, what's going on? So we have to we can create new habits. So I've been going really deep into some key habits, like journaling, and we can talk about that. Like, I have a really cool journaling practice about self love and ways I'm giving, ways I'm receiving, uh, creating a space for dreams. Um, you know, really going deeper into into prayer, meditation. You know, prayer is actually kind of a new thing for me. <laughs> so, but I've been practicing that, going into vocal lessons, like. We could talk about the voice too. Like I've been working on vocal lessons, like strengthening my voice in different keys in the same way that I have I have the approach to training my muscles, like in the gym, you know, and applying consistency, working on songs. I've been doing Facebook Lives every day in our private group. So I'm doing a course, like a, a, a breathing course every day at 9 a.m. Central Time and a, and a workout course every day at 9.30 a.m. So I come out of that and I feel good. I feel like I've been singing, I've been praying, meditating, right, journaling right. on myself and helping people. And I come out of that and I'm like, I've already won the day. You know, I've already won the day. So I've been doing that consistently and I and I feel better and better every single day. And it, it's really like making everything else a little bit better too, you know. Dude, dude in your voice, I was <laughs> I was shocked when I when I heard your voice in mm. uh, in ceremony that one that one night. It was dude, you have a voice, man. I mean, it is Thank you incredible thank incredible. you incredible thank you yeah the singing in and of itself like it's uh i mean I, I used to be like super super duper shy and not 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 talk much never sing because it was closed off right you know going back to like what culture does like if, if someone like a child is singing and and, and someone else is like don't ever sing again like the, the kid could get brainwashed into thinking never ever sing and that's only for like artists but like indigenous cultures everybody sings right <laughs> and it's a big part of like opening up our throat and opening up our lungs and our chest and using the voice it, there's a connection with that and i think courage and confidence so it's a it's a big deal it's a big deal over health that i, th I don't think anybody's even tapping into right it's a yeah. you know, it, it taps into very um primordial shame and judgment issues that can mm. 
out of it. And I, and I say that just personally because I'm one of those people too. Mm -hmm. I was a kid who didn't say a whole lot. Um, I still haven't gotten to the point where I will sing. Um, mm. but, but I understand that under, I've got a lot of other issues to deal with first right <laughs> before I get to that one. <laughs> but I know where that, I can see it because I've, you know, mm. I've been in ceremonies opportunity where that opportunity is there and I have de declined and I, mm. and I check myself. Well, that's interesting. Why did you decline? And I get it. It's shame and judgment. It's, mm -hmm. shame, it's shame and judgment in the stories in my mind. And like I say, that's. That, that's another problem for another time on down the road because I've yeah. got a number of other issues I want to, <laughs> I need to deal with first. But I, I understand where it comes from. And I think yeah. for so many people, that same shame judgment is used in so many other areas. There's so many other areas of speaking yeah. out or acting or being yourself or uh, taking a stance or yeah. critical thinking and all of these other things that those two devices are so powerful on the human yeah. on the human entity yeah it's like a voice it comes up to me like a voice that says like how dare you like who do you think you are right. to try this like someone else is already doing it better like just don't like you're just gonna make yourself look stupid right and it, and it tries to negotiate and, and if i let that get the best of me it's like it crumbles me it just like puts me in this cave um yeah it, it makes me think a lot about courage have you ever read any david hawkins you ever read letting go he's uh, got this i want to say yes that name sounds very familiar He's got this thing called the map of consciousness. You know, at the bottom is what you're talking about, like shame, guilt, right, right, right. anger, sadness. As you go up, like pride is right below, mm -hmm. pride is right below courage. And then on the other side of courage, courage is like a door. On the other side of courage is like peace, acceptance, right. joy, enthusiasm. There's always this thing that we like, for me, I mean, I've always felt, felt it, like something I back down from and it pushes me down further and into right. those negative feelings and, and like, my posture changes, mm -hmm. my, my voice is like rattling all of a sudden. I take different actions and I hide or I procrastinate right. because I'm, I'm afraid of doing this thing. I'm afraid of being seen, you know, but it's like, do the thing. Oh, and everyone goes, oh, you did it. Way to go. I can do it too. You know, right. <laughs> it's right. contagious. It is. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so as I, as I ride my bike through Austin, as I'm walking around, you know, Zilker Park, downtown, mm -hmm. um, all of these very, very cool areas. I ride out to uh, the University of Texas at Clark Field and do, you know, body weight workouts and chins and all of this stuff. And Austin is a very, very active town. So there are all kinds of people out running, biking, you know, doing their thing, hanging out. 90% um, of them are not wearing any masks. I mean, they're just out and about doing their thing, enjoying the fresh air, getting the sunshine. And every now and again, I will see somebody in full on mask gloves. I mean, like, you know, just like the, the biohazard suit. And I, and I, and I think, okay, are they number one, are they immunocompromised and they are, are they need the protection? Is it that, or are they, have they just, bought the disinformation line because mm -hmm. there is so much disinformation out right now, which is another track we can talk on is yeah. who is controlling the narrative and towards what end are they controlling the narrative for? Mm -hmm. um, and if you could just riff on that for just a second. Yeah. So um, this is something that I, that I was looking at first when this all began too, is how we perceive this situation and, and the question that we're asking. So one question, you could ask is, how do I not get sick, mm. right? And the other question you could ask is, how do I get healthier and boost my immune system, right? And the, the, the message I've always observed from a conventional standpoint, this is, what, this is after experience and working in acute care settings, neurological settings, um, many hospitals, many outpatient clinics, home health settings, seeing a lot of different processes happen and how people go through diseases and ultimately suffer. It's, it's asking the question of how can I avoid getting sick? It's like sick care. It's treating symptoms. It's not thinking about, it's not looking at the human being as a, as a creature that deserves things that it was evolved to get, all the vitamins and minerals and fresh air and sleep and low stress levels. Those things connecting with others, which is why we're kind of threatened right now and being inside. Right. Sun exposure, oh my gosh. But those things strengthen your immune system, right? So I, I think... Um, 
we, we have an issue that's, that's really deep between um, the conventional healthcare model, what's happening in mainstream media and the messages that people get because fear like feeds more fear and people are, are conditioned to click more on fear. Like if I send it, and I, I have data to back this up. If I send an email to 5 million people and this has been done, if I say five foods to never eat, and then I, I do an AB split test and I compare that with five super duper healthy foods every single time, the five foods to never eat will open more because we've been conditioned on fear, right? right? So the, the, the media outlets, they're a, they're a platform. They want more energy, more attention going to their place. And they know that if they give you that fear-based image, if they twist that data just a little bit to make you fear things a little more, you're going to pay attention to their channel a little more. Right. And they've got you and they've got advertisers. And those advertisers are kind of back behind all this thing, right? That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm seeing as a possibility. That's what I think is quite, quite, I know that's going on, right? I know that's going on. Um, I, I do believe it's being skewed. And the thing we have to keep in mind is like that fear does terrible things for the immune system. It makes it more likely that you'll get sick. Mm -hmm. It's like if, you, if you're scared of being bit by a dog and you walk by a dog, it could be a really nice dog, but if that dog fears your energy, it's gonna bite you. And this virus, will, I, I truly fear it'll bite, it'll bite you the more you're afraid of it. So the other, the other thing is it's a conflict of interest towards the body, right? We have wearing masks and then pulling off to take a sip of Di Dr. Pepper. Right, we have people wearing masks and, and having cereal in the morning and putting sugar in there. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I mean it's, it's, it's true. true. <laughs> it's true. I, I used to go treat these people, and like I'm just, I mean, I, I've treated people wearing a mask. Like this is like long before. This just pe people were worried about getting sick, and they would wear a mask, and then, and that's how they. It's, I mean, that's an extreme, but there's a spectrum of like what's happening with uh, uh, just an unaware mind and body that's disconnected you know it's not and it's not quite aware you know so what what i'm trying to and, and i'm again i'm picking word crumbs that you you and everybody else is leaving off for me in this movement you know what this movement is about it's about returning to our native roots you know it's about living in harmony with our biology so what what we find is when people just do these simple things like just eat whole real food drink lots of water sleep uh, breathe like breathing is primary you know, I'm getting more and more into my breath. I'm doing so many practices and going deeper into like Wim Hof breathing and all these different techniques. And even when I'm when I am working out, trying to get my breath perfect on the movement, the eccentric, you know, and the concentric, the holds, like holding it to where I can have a relaxed face throughout, but being firm. Like the, so many things happen in the breath to improve the immune system. And it's like the 80-20 rule. These are the, the least things that make the most difference. Not saying you shouldn't wear a mask, keep washing your hands, that's fine. Right. But right. like, that's the, those are the little things that make the little difference, you know what I mean? Um, so it's attention. And it's because a lot of the advice we're given, given from conventional healthcare is coming from people who got this information from other people and they're, they're conditioned, you know? They're not, they're not practicing waking up and getting sun and journaling and working out and eating well. They're doing what they've been told to do. So they're unaware of it too. And if they were aware of it, we'd be getting a different narrative. You know, um, as far as the perception of the culture, you know, this fear information, I, uh, I, I see a future where that comes to an end, actually, because we'll have a, a species that's aware that that's not good for us. You right. know, so I don't know if you heard that Malcolm Gladwell book. He talked about New York City, how the subways used to all, all have graffiti. And, and, and every time someone went down there, they'd be scared and there'd be rapes right. and murders. And they just started painting over it. Right. They just started painting over it. And I, after a while, like they would come back and paint, just paint over it again. And after a while, like everyone was like, I think it's safe down here. I think we can walk around and go to go five blocks. Right. So it's a perception thing, you know? It's a perception thing. And the birds are still chirping and everything's happening outside. You know what I mean? The nature's still going on and, and humans are like, oh, oh. So that's kind of my take on it, you know? My, 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 my point is just focus on being healthy, be happy, you know? Um, do things that, that boost your immune system, get to moving. Think of this time as a, fertile soil, you know, you're trying to plant new seeds about who you want to be Focus on that rather than how can I not get sick? Right. Different question. This is a great opportunity. And I've, I've said this over and over again, if, if you have not been concerned with your health or, or turning inward and not looking for external verifications of health or external, um, how can I say, uh, I don't want to say guidance because guidance is always good, but it, it starts here, right? It starts yeah. with you. The change, whether that's whether that's a civic change that you want to see done in the world, or whether it's health or whatever it is, it always starts with the individual, right? And that's the yeah. hard place to start. 
you mm-hmm. know, many, many people, because that means you have to turn all the attention inside. And I think that's one thing that, it, that's like the double edge of the sword. Is it good that people have had to take a step back, maybe isolate a lot more than they have isolated before? It only in the sense that they have the opportunity to now look inside. And if they mm-hmm. do that properly, um, it, it is a, and, and I, re- I wrote a post on Facebook a few days ago about how I was so grateful for COVID-19 for all of these things, right? That it forced me to do this. It forced me to do that. It forced me to look inside more than I normally would. And I'm one who is uh, uh, introspective quite a bit, <clears throat> but it's, it, it's forced me to do one other thing that I haven't done before. And that is a practice of picking a sacred cow per day whatever that sacred cow may be and totally questioning it. Who Mm. told that story? Why do I believe whatever it is that I believe? And do I still believe that? And can I support that belief? And by sacred cow, you mean like a metaphorical sacred cow? Metaphorical sacred cow. Yeah. Whatever, uh, for instance, is, is, um, pasture raised meat good to eat is, 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 is is my human body. <clears throat> regardless of anybody else, is my human body, does my human body thrive on that? Mm-hmm. Or, is this, or is this a story that I've told myself? And oh, by the way, is this a story that's supported by the business that I run? Because me believing in this is totally dependent on my livelihood. Yeah. But can yeah. I dive into that fully? dive into that ocean and really pick it apart and dive into it. So yeah. like that, and that's, you know, that's uneven ground and that's uh, uncomfortable. Mm. And it, all of those things that, uh, and, it, and another practice that I've done, is that in- uncomfortable for me to do? It sure is because you know what? I bump up against things that I'm like, I don't know if I believe that fully anymore. Yeah. You wow. Know, yeah. Tough, that's a tough one to let go of. And just the fact of being uncomfortable and squirmy and Mm. being able to step back and look at myself and go, oh, oh, look at you. You're uncomfortable right now. Isn't that cute? Isn't that (laughs) interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But I think that has pushed a lot of people over the edge. Yeah. They're just not ready for this. And it's it's a lot to take on. I mean, I, I can sit here and and talk about this from a place of having, you know, eight, 10 years of practice, essentially doing this. This wasn't Mm -hmm. just dropped on my head, like it has for a lot of people. Um, It's kind of, Chad, it's kind of the same as I have seen people in their first float take experience, kind of lose their shit a little bit. Yeah, it's the first time they have been forced to be with nothing else but their, their own mind. Mm -hmm. deal with what's generated in their own mind. And it, it, it's, it's a lot. It's a big step for a lot of people. It's huge. And it can be incredibly uncomfortable. And like, right. the, like really looking at the stories we've been telling ourselves mm. and noticing how those stories make us feel, how those stories have impacted our lives, how they've impacted others. You brought up some really key points there that, that I've been going through as well during the same time. And, and you, you know, questioning our own beliefs I think is like really powerful because within those beliefs are there, there are these repetitive thoughts go into feelings and emotions, right? right? And then we, we create like a way of being around it. So to look at, and there's an identity on top of that mm-hmm. that tries to protect itself. Like when you were saying, I have a job and a career that kind of depends on this message. Right. And you're noticing that there's a connection there and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just holding on to a bias to confirm this, this reality. Right. Man. right. And it's like, whoa. And then, then backing up even more and being like, is that even true? I don't even know, you know? And I, th- I think the ultimate, because I've been going through this too, and we're like, what, what happens when someone's freaking out in a float tank? What, ha- what happens if someone, you know, is in a ceremony and it, it comes on really strong? Like what, that, that's so much coming on so quick. It's like putting a lot of weight on the bar real quick, you know? And the, right. the person's like, I don't know, I, this new position, I don't know how to stabilize it. And right. I almost want to just like let go of the weight. Right. And that's kind of like what you, we have to do. And, and to get out of the way of it and just completely surrender to it, you know, that, that it's there and accept it, you know, and notice it. And it's like, whew, that's where the breathing, I think, is like so powerful to notice all these things. But I'm with you. I mean, you know, earlier I read the, the uh, Albert Einstein book by uh, Walter Isaacson. You know, oh, you ever, wow, you ever read that wow. before? 
you know, I, I have that book and I've started to read read it at times and I've got diverted off of, into other things. But what I have read so far is fantastic. And just the, the way I read yeah. it anyway is like I'll, I'll pick up a book, read some of it, and then I, I, I hop <laughs> all over the place. Yes, fantastic book. Well, he, I mean, he may have, you may have been at the part where he talked about how Albert Einstein grew up thinking about this thought experiment about a train moving in one direction and then uh, a cannonball shooting at a perpendicular direction while the train was moving, right? So if you're on the outside of the train, looking in at the train moving, you see the cannonball, you would say the cannonball shooting directly across the train. But if you're inside of a moving train, uh, it's moving. So the cannonball is coming in on one side and it ends actually could be behind you because you're moving so fast at a diagonal, right? So from the perspective of inside the train, it's a diagonal. It's not a straight shot, right? And it really got me thinking, and this is like kind of what I think really burst Einstein onto thinking about quantum physics and theory of relativity is that like there's just perspectives, you know, there's perspectives. Like right. um, th this, what you're seeing here is only definitive in this little small, small portion of the universe, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it, it's a completely different perspective over here. So it, it kind of got me lost for a little bit because I was like, what's true? Like there's like, there's like nothing true. I don't know what to do. Like all my identity was just started crashing. All my beliefs started questioning everything. And the same thing with like food, working out, you know, and dealing with like an injury, like my shoulder's injured. There's an identity and I can't jerk overhead anymore with like 300 pounds. I have to give that up. There's an attachment. There's a perspective of being my body, mm -hmm. you know? So um, when I, then I started just asking like, well, in my thinking, is, is this useful? Like, you know, for instance, like, is the food I'm eating actually useful? Is the way I'm moving actually useful? Is the way I'm perceiving the world actually useful? Does it make me feel good? Or like, make me attack myself? Or does it make, am I attacking others or criticizing others because of my beliefs? Like, what's the impact of that? So going down that rabbit hole of like self-inquiry, you know, <laughs> sitting in silence, breathing, um, th those are powerful, powerful processes where I think we change, we transform who we are in like a soul nervous system level like where, where those th two things mingle like something happens there you know and we change who we are that's that, that stuff fascinates me and i think um i, I think that's kind of happening right now on a global level I, you know what i mean i i think a lot of people are doing that and we're hitting this like tipping point where people are coming out of this and be like we got a clean slate what do we want to do with this what kind of world do we want to create right. how can we nurture destiny you know what I mean? What kind of seeds do I want to, what kind of person am I going to be? What habits am I going to pick up? Because the old way, there's, there's things we want to take with us that was from the old way, because this is a transition period. Mm -hmm. things we take, there's a lot of things like, let that go, let that go. And like bring in new things that we're, we're resonating with based on these questions that we're asking, you know? So I, yeah. see, I see all kinds of opportunity. All no, kinds of opportunity. Is, and then Michelle and I were talking the other day and we were, we were saying how, you know, when, when was like the last time we went through a, a major crisis. And for us, it was 2008, 2009. And that, that crisis was a financially, because that's when the 2008, uh, that's when the housing market crashed and we were so heavily leaned in, in real estate at that time. And we went from, we went from freaking balling to uh, teetering on bankruptcy. Hmm. And shortly followed by our daughter dying in an auto accident, who was away at college at the time. So we had the one-two punch, and, hmm. and that was uh, personally for us devastating. On you know emotionally, physically, financially, j just across the board, it was <clears> devastating. <throat> and <clears throat> born of that, wound up being paleo FX. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that, that just that put us into a situation where where we were now primed, you know, it, it's, it was a, a Cali energy, right? Just coming in total, total Shiva destruction, boom, destroy everything. Mm -hmm. And from that destruction, there was this feeling of, we can do anything. Yeah. We, we are in this position right now. Um, this is about as bad as it gets. What are we going to do? Mm. There was a, there was a, and I, I would never go through that time again. I would never give up my daughter, never. But there was a point in time where we started to come up from the depths and it was almost liberating because we didn't have to go back to what we did before. We didn't have to do anything. Yeah. No. And that was, and I see that same kind of feeling right now with, a, with a lot of people. Right, both personally, 
and from the business side of things. Yeah. There, there are a lot of businesses that are not going to recover from this. Yeah, There, there are many. And I, I can tell you, Paleo FX is reeling right now. Hmm. But on the other side, there is just vast opportunity. And if you look yeah. at it as an opportunity and not try to cling to the, the, the past is the past. And that's destructed. To your point, can you are you going to be able to salvage some pieces from the past and bring them into the future? Yes. But the future is so wide open and there is such excitement about that. Right. So now. much excitement. Right yeah. Now. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. I mean, because that is what's happening is, is during this time when a crisis happens, like some people will be in a position where they can really benefit from it. You know what I mean? Because like they're well positioned. They were without even knowing what was coming. They got lucky and were prepared for it. You know, you <clears throat> call it what it is, luck. You can prepare yourself as much as you want, but sometimes there's still some luck. Right. And there's other people who, I mean, I, one of my best friends, you know, Brian Schoenbaum owns VUCA. It's a community meetup group. One of the best community meetup, like Paleo FX has had stuff there. Right. This is a, it's an amazing place, beautiful art, been a, an, an amazing place for uh, bringing communities together for the past, I don't know, 10 years. Brian's amazing. Everyone over there is amazing. And as soon as this thing happened, we're going on seven weeks now, no one's going in there. Right. You know, and, and, and he's got people that he's got to pay and, and people are canceling their memberships and events are being canceled. And he's like just sitting with it like there's nothing he can do you know and he's, he's hoping that the cash flow and everything works out and he keep it going but like that's like really that's really tough like flowing flowing with that you know and i've had friends that have uh, had parents a good father um, passed away you know with covid on the on the thing so all these inevitable things have changed and and something's going with it and learning how to to ride the wave with like ease and flow at the same time and so right. much is happening so, and the, i mean it makes you think of community too and how important it is to like stick with, you mentioned tribe at the very beginning right. for people to come together. And like, I love Brian so much. We've been doing masterminds, me and my best friends and all, all like trying to help each other and support each other. Hey, how are you doing? Do you need help? And there's something about that that feels like amazing to me. Like, an, like it's an adventure. Like we're kind of going to a, like a mini, not, not war, but like we're, we're a tribe, we're a troop. We're doing things together. Right. And it makes me feel alive. And I think we've been missing some of that too. Um, cause we, we got used to like the actual same old, same old, and, yeah. and we haven't, we haven't adapted to change. We're not good at adapting to change yet. Right. We haven't had any change. <laughs> there hasn't been a major, major crisis. I mean, yeah. And going back to what you and Michelle went through, I have to say, like, I think that, hmm, first of all, so, so sorry about your daughter yeah. and, and the way that like Michelle consistently expresses love for that and, and pays tribute to that. And I see Michelle like devoting a lot of her life towards towards that mm. towards that energy, and I just want to say that really inspires me. And um, I, I thank you for the strength that you brought out of that. And the whole the one who gets knocked down but get back gets back up is stronger than the one that never gets knocked down at all. Right, like it's really right. it's really true, you know. And and you know, Brendan and I experienced that in our own life. My wife had breast yeah. cancer like four years yeah. ago, went through a crazy experience, questioned a lot of our beliefs, but that experience, like made us made us stronger you know right. it's a it's a it's a trusting process you know it's a state of trust that you have to go through the whole time and it can be challenging right. a, lot, a lot of a lot of world views crashing it yeah it, it and it is challenging and that's not it, it's not easy you know but mm -hmm. you, you become anti-fragile on the on the other side of it to steal a phrase from Nassam Tlaib which is um mm -hmm. to, to swing this back around to our immune systems what what we want our immune systems to do is to become anti-fragile. And yeah. <clears throat> just as you can't become emotionally <clears throat> anti-fragile without going some, through some rough periods, your physical body has to be stressed to, mm -hmm. to grow. Your immune system has to be stressed. And to think that we can live in a bubble and constantly protect ourselves from environmental onslaughts, we are, so, we are in a sea of bacteria and viruses. Yeah. That's how we evolved. Mm -hmm. um, and to think that we can distance ourselves from that or to vaccinate ourselves against every freaking potential danger that's out there, either emotionally, physically, via the immune system or what, it, it's it, it's just not possible. The first, yeah. the first line of defense is you and your immune system. Or tell, how can we bolster our immune system? I know you, Native Path is uh, 
huge into that. But so right. you know, the emotional and the in the in the mental side, there is uh, there is that yes, but there's also some physical things that we can do that we can take to to help this mm -hmm. problem. Along. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we're we're all about. Um, getting the body and the mind and everything in harmony with its biology. So like what it's, what it's designed for, you know, and, and taking it away from a lot of the, the structure of, of modern culture. So the foundations really are the breath, sleeping, low stress levels, eating good food, drinking lots of water and all of that. So um, aside from that, there's, there's really powerful immune boosting ingredients that you can take. So we actually formulated something called native defense. And it, my wife, it's been like, as soon as this happened, she was getting me all these different bottles of like vitamin C, vitamin D and Z, and of course, I know this. And I was like taking all these things. I was like, I'm, I'm not really into taking all the things. I'd rather just take one thing. So so, so, so that's what we did is we took, um, and we, we really got a lot of information from some of the top leading doctors out there about what, what, what are the most effective things to boost in the immune system. And we put it all in one capsule. So it's vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, quercetin, Siberian ginseng, zinc, and uh, elderberry, mm -hmm. right? So all, all of these things together, they have, there's, a, there's a link that I think you're providing there, but all these things together have different things that uh, improve the immune system, clean, clean out the cellular health, they're good for respiration, which is so important for this time, and they're good for detoxification. So it's, it's a simple thing that we're doing that we've um, seen great results from. We just released it last week and people are, are really enjoying it. So it's just a nice thing of just taking one thing in conjunction with all the good things for you, like the natural movement, eating and all that stuff. It helps you put on your natural native defense, your body armor, right? right. And, and changing the, the way you're going to deal with any potential viruses or anything. Because like you said, viruses, they've been around forever. It's not like it's new, but it's, it's the ones who are strong <laughs> that, that, that keep going. You right. know? So be, be strong and be firm and, and just be smart, you know? And that's, that's a better way of, of handling things. And that's, again, Chad, that's why I love you so much, man, because you, you are not just a, like a, what can I, like a corporation peddling a supplement. I mean, this dude yeah. freaking walks the walk. I mean, he does, <laughs> he does the workouts, he does the meta, he does all the things, mm. which is, I, I mean, I, I just love that about you, man, because you're, you are a walking billboard. And I think that, you know, People, people should really take, and I and I think they're starting to do that now. And I think as yeah. as people, we are becoming hip to the whole idea of marketing and propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. and becoming more and more hip to that. And I and I, I'm always hesitant to wrap marketing into the marketing was born of propaganda, right? But yep. I, but in in my mind, marketing is no different than money. It's it's an it, it's an information transfer. It's an energy transfer. And so money is neither good or evil, just like marketing is neither good or evil. Right. Both can be spun with negative vibration. Both yes. can be used in negative ways, but that's up to us. Totally. Totally up to us in how, totally. we, in how we choose to spin it. Um, <sighs> yeah. So that's, uh, you know, it's just, in, I, it, Keith from 10 years ago would have been so anti-marketing and I, would, <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I, I, it, which was an, another sacred cow that I challenged at one point, I was like, okay, let me, do I really believe that? And, mm -hmm. if, and it, I was challenged by Darren Hardy at one point who was like, mm. you know, you're, 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 you're trying to do this event that you think is a, that, that is a good idea. He's like, I, 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 so, yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I suspect it's a really, really good idea. Um, but you are so a, a profit negative or so skeptical about that. How are you ever going to get this word out? Do you believe in the word that you're trying to put out? I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, yeah. well, that's on you then. If you yeah. don't have a profit, you can't build a bigger bullhorn and shame on you for not telling more people about it. Right. <laughs> like, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it, it took someone to get in my face and say, you know, either shut up or play. It's yeah. Really but um, so, yeah, it was a uh, it was good. And I thank Darren Hardy to this day for, for he did that to Michelle and I both. He co totally called us on our bullshit and said, no, I'm not believing that. You yeah. Do not, you do not believe in your message. And if you're not willing to go out and scream it from the, to the highest rooftop in any way possible. Mm. So true. Right. Right.
Yeah, like when I, I think it's one of the most powerful lessons in marketing, but also in communication, you know, because if I have an offer or a service that I truly, truly believe in, that I truly believe can help people, which I do, right? right? I'm doing though I'm doing my prospects and the people I want to serve a disservice if I don't get their attention. Yes. You know, because we live in a world of attention going on all over the place. Like it's our, our, it's the most powerful uh, currency. We're losing it all the time to like social media and stuff. But what I've learned is it's so important to like get the attention, get on the wavelength of the thinking and then bring them into what, what I know is best for them. Like as far as like helping them with their health and getting them off like, uh, pain meds and prescription drugs and, and, right. and just so, sorting through a lot of the, the bad information that's been out there. Right. Um, yeah, it's so powerful. So powerful. I, I, I love, I, I've learned to like love marketing and, and business and all that. It's you know, fun. me too, because I, I saw it from, from uh, what you said, I'm seeing it from a different perspective. Yeah. And so yeah. I see it from a totally different perspective now. And I see it as an opportunity to, to help people and get a word out. And let's face it, we are, the enemy or the opposition, if you want to call it, is massive and has a huge propaganda machine. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. got to fight fire with fire. And I'm like, I'm a high, I am a high vibration person. I trust myself to utilize and wield this tool to the betterment of other people. Yeah. That's, and if I don't, that's on me. That's totally on me. Mm -hmm. I trust myself enough to, enough to do that. Uh, Melissa, thank you very much for dropping that link in it. Melissa's on it, man. She Way to go, Melissa. Way to go, Melissa. And also, I'll say, uh, if anybody's watching this on our page, if you just write the capital words defense, um, we'll get you a, a link. That's It's the same link that Melissa has here. And that way, uh, everybody who is watching it, just if you want the link, it may not show up on your feed if it's being shared, but just say capital defense. So Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Chad, man, I could talk to you forever. And <laughs> we got to do a hike soon when you get better. You do have to do a hike. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. for anybody, uh, Chad and I and another friend, we're going to go on a, uh, they were nice enough to invite me on a hike. And uh, I had a little bicycle mishap that <laughs> messed my cap up a little bit. And I'm trying to be older and wiser and let myself rest up instead of pushing through, which was another thing just, oh, by the way, that I found out recently that um, a, another sacred cow just real quick, because this is in my head, and if I don't put it out of my mouth, I'm gonna be itchy. If I, I have always told myself that I treat my body as a temple. Hmm. My, my body is a temple, my body is a temple, I treat it as such, and um, I questioned that sacred cow. It went, I was like, do you treat your body as a temple? And I kind of went inward and asked, and the answer I got from my body was like, you do not. You treat, hmm. me, you treat me like a tool. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am no more than a than a like Shelby Mustang to you, mm -hmm. right? You just try to get everything you can out of the carburetor and tweak this and tweak that and and you know wash and wax it yada yada. But you don't treat me as a temple. You treat me as a tool. And mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big difference in that, and that was a gut punch. Yeah, but it's true. So yeah, body. I've, I've, I'm trying to rectify that. <laughs> I, I mean, I think as an athlete, like that's something we all like, I, yeah. I have in a big way, you know, cause I'm all it's, in college. I was like, I'm going to push this thing. It's, then I got into CrossFit. I'm going to go as hard as I possibly can. Right. I'm feeding, feeding it fuel. I will push the edge if I get hurt as part of the program. Right. You know? And then, and then like notice, like, for instance, I, I mentioned earlier, my shoulder, like it, it labrum's torn. I'm like, that's the, that's the consequence. Right. So it's, it's like backing off and being gentle with that thing being like, Oh, well, pretty awesome body. Like, you got a heart and brain and nervous system and perceptions right. and like you can breathe in and just like maybe, maybe be gentle with it for the rest of the time you're here. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah super. Uh, Ta Wedi, thank you very much. If you're oh, listening yeah. for, for uh, challenging me in that direction. Um, that was oh, yeah. super, super insightful part uh, insight from Ta Wedi on that one. Um, mm. so thank you very much, Ta. Chad, again. Yeah, man, I could talk to you forever. Um, thank, you, man. thank you very much for coming on. Um, everybody out there, make sure you check out Native Path and check out Chad's Instagram and get some get some workout inspiration. And it's always I'm always like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and also, um, I was going to say, like, uh, we, have, we have a nice private community, Native Path private community. So if you just do a search for that, anybody is welcome to come in. But that's where I do uh, 9 a.m. breathing course, 930. Oh, wow. 
workout course every day so everybody can come in it's it's free to everybody we just ask you like three questions and it says like just be cool you know so we'll, we'll let you in but just do a search for native path private community chad if you, want, if you want to drop a link in the comments after this feel free to do so okay great we'll do that we'll do that awesome thank cool. you awesome chad i hope to see you and brenda again sometime soon and okay uh, we'll yeah. do thanks for coming on yeah, tell, we'll do it tell michelle said hi thank you guys i will, I will absolutely um, everybody at 1230, I believe Michelle will be on with Dr. Mary Clifton and Mary Clifton is going to be dishing on uh, CBD and cannabis. Oh, she is, nice. a, she is a, an expert that uh, we've had the opportunity to hang out with uh, Dr. Mary Clifton quite often um, in New York and here in Austin. So oh, uh, sweet. she's, she's the bomb diggity. I love Dr. Mary Clifton as I love Chad Waldy. But <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Man. All right, man, have a good one. All right. And bam. Bam.